Today, Log gets a print surface tune-up. Most of you have probably seen the Log 3D printer before. It's a low-cost attempt at cloning a Prusa MK2 3D printer. So when I was building this machine, I wanted to keep it as affordable as possible, so I went with an inexpensive heat plate with an aluminum plate on top of that and a print and Z build surface on top of that. So it would be heated, it'd be removable, and it would still work with my inductive probe. Now one of the features I like best about genuine Prusa printers is their build surface. This is a Prusa MK42 heated bed. It comes on a Prusa MK2 printer. There's also an MK52 heated bed that comes on the MK3 that has a removable steel sheet. But that's a 24 volt setup, and this is a 12 volt setup. Plus, we're trying to clone an MK2, so we're going to stick with the MK42. Now there's only one issue you might have when trying to do a swap out like this, and that's Prusa doesn't sell these beds outright you have to buy them as a replacement part, as a Prusa customer. But there are other companies that make something very similar to this bed, such as Orvalo 3D printing. So you can purchase a bed that's very similar. So today we're going to configure the stock Marlin to work like the Prusa version of Marlin does to utilize the feature on this bed, get everything installed, and get it up and running. So when I was putting this whole setup together, I actually just countersunk some screws into this aluminum plate and then put nuts on them on the bottom to attach it to the bed carriage. Now the MK42 bed, it has standoffs that you screw down to, so we'll just have to find some screws that are the right length because the screws will come up from the bottom now on this new setup. So we got the four outer screws off, we can remove this surface. We'll unhook the heated bed. On an MK42 bed, the bolts that hold the belt guide on actually run through the bed carriage and into the bed so we'll remove these for now and we'll find some that attach to the MK42. These are just nutted on the back of the bed carriage right at the moment. So the decommission of the old bed is now complete. So now we need to find some screws that'll work with this bed carriage. This is six millimeter MDF and the MK42 bed. I'm gonna go with some M3 by eight millimeter button head screws for the four corners and we'll put a washer on it because all the support on MDF we can get, the better. So we got the four corners on the bed and on the center two holes, I think I'll go with some M3 by 10 millimeter cap head screws to go through this printed part. So the hardware install is complete. I did have to use some M3 by 14 millimeter screws on these. The tens weren't quite long enough, but no worries. Now we'll get it wired up. The MK42 comes with one of these plugs on the end, but we'll just remove that and use the one that's on the ramps board. And I think we can deal with this style of connector for the thermistor. All right, wiring's done. Looks like the thermistor is reading. Let's see if it'll heat up. The LED came on and it looks like it's heating up just fine. So we should be good. So the new bed's on. After I made a few adjustments to the bed carriage, everything was fine. Now we move in to see if we can get Marlin configured to hit the spots that are actually located physically on the MK42. So the challenge here is to get the probe configured in Marlin to hit these nine spots that are in place on the MK42. So this is a somewhat current version of Marlin. It is 1.1.8, configured for the log printer. And we're going to have to change a few things in here to be able to hit those probe points. Now we could compare our files with the actual Prusa firmware files, which you see here. But Prusa is just far enough away from Marlin to make things a little bit hard to understand. There might be a little trial and error when getting the probe to line up, but I don't think it'll be that difficult. So let's just try to alter our current configuration and make it work with the points on the MK42 bed. So the Z probe is enabled. Z minimum probe uses Z minimum end stop. That doesn't change. It is a fixed mounted probe. The location of the probe is behind and to the right of the hot end. Now Z offset is going to have to be adjusted, but we can do that after the fact. I had my bed size set at 230 and 210, but that's probably because I was getting some collision. So I'm going to go ahead and make it the full bed size, 250 by 210. The minimum positions for the axes might have to be adjusted a little later, but that's kind of what determines if you're printing in the center of the bed or not. So we can check that out after we get the probing working. So let's head down to bed leveling. We're going to stick with auto bed leveling by linear. And this is where you set the boundaries for the probing limits. This is what's going to enable us to get to those probing spots correctly. So with some paper underneath the hot end, this is the Z probe point for home. So let's go ahead and do G28 and see how close we are to that point. Hand on the power switch and G28. So the probe was close enough to home on that spot, 
The probe is actually just a little bit behind and to the right of that spot, but we are at X and Y end stops. So there's really nothing we can do about that unless we physically adjust the printer's size. We could go ahead and slide the gantry back a little bit to get it a little closer to that point front and back, but we might be close enough to actually level. So G28 worked. Let's try a G29. Again, hand on the power switch, and that's G29. So when we did the G29, it moved the bed forward a little bit and the hot end to the right. That's because it's trying to keep the probe within a certain boundary, so it doesn't probe outside of the bed. Now there is enough copper inside one of these beds that you could probe pretty much anywhere you wanted, but it's going to be a lot more accurate if we can get to these specific points. So we'll get into Marlin and try to adjust it to get close. Since we don't have to move X and Y to hit the first probe point, we can make those points the same as the offset from the extruder that the probe is. So this is the current X and Y offset, 23 and 10. So we'll go down to bed leveling points, and we'll make the left probing position 23, and the front 10. Let's re-upload. Upload's complete. Let's go ahead and connect back up. We will G28. And let's give our G29 another try. We're better, but still not close enough. Let's go ahead and change our Y minimum position back to zero, just so we're on a level playing field. Let's change our Y probe offset from extruder to zero, and our front probe position to zero. Let's run this as a test, just to see what it's going to buy us. We'll re-upload. Upload's complete, let's connect back up, G28, and let's see what G29 does now. It didn't move the Y or the X. First point looks good. The second point, we're a little too far to the left. And same with the third point, a little bit too far to the left. So let's disconnect, and we're going to change our right probe point to 240. This will let us reach a little further out over the front of the bed. So let's re-upload. Upload's complete. Let's connect up. G28 and G29. This time we were just a little bit too far to the right. Let's try 230. We'll connect back up. G28. This one looks a lot better, but we're still just a little bit too far to the right. 225. G28. G29. And that is just about perfect. Now we'll look at what it does when it gets to the next row of points. The next row looks pretty good, but I think it needs to move back just a little bit. A little too far forward on the last row as well. So let's try 195 for the back pro position. G28 and G29. The back row looks perfect. I want to see that one more time. I don't think we can get any better than that. So we're doing pretty good. We got Marlin configured and we were able to get really close to have the probe be in the center of all nine points on the bed. But now we need to figure out the Z offset. Prusa has a feature that you can do this live, but there's also a feature in Marlin that you can do pretty much the same thing. So we'll take a look at that now. So we'll head back in, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Z offset to zero, because we're pretty much going to start from scratch. And then we'll head over to configuration underscore ADV. And let's just do a find on baby. And here we have the baby stepping section. This is what allows you to control with your LCD how close the nozzle is to the bed. Mine is already defined, but it is not defined by default. So if you have a comment here, you can remove it and that will enable baby stepping. There's really no reason to have baby step on X and Y, so you can leave that commented out. Baby step multiplicator, that's the increment of how much each baby step is. The higher the number, the faster you're gonna move. Baby step Z probe offset, I suggest that you uncomment this because that's gonna take the baby step setting and make it your Z probe offset, and that's exactly what we want. Double click for Z baby stepping, that means you can just click the LCD knob twice during a print and it'll pull up the menu and it'll let you adjust it. Double click max interval, that's how much time you have to hit that second LCD button to get the menu to pull up. And you can just leave the graphic overlay for baby stepping commented out, I don't find it that useful. And let's re-upload. Upload's complete, let's connect back up. Let's G28, and we'll G29. Now let's make sure the nozzle is clean, and let's head to the center of the bed. G1, X, 125, Y, 105, and we'll start out at Z10. Now let's move down to Z5. We're nowhere even close for the nozzle touching the bed. 
we'll go ahead and move down to Z0. We're roughly three millimeters away from the bed. So we'll slide our sheet of paper under here, we'll double click to baby step, and we'll start running our Z offset down until we get close to the paper. Starting to grip, we can roll it back just a little bit. Negative 1.28 looks like a great place to start. Now that we have the rough number for our Z offset, let's disconnect, head back into Marlin, and we'll make our new Z probe offset negative 1.28. And we'll upload. Now that it's saved in Marlin, when you double click to go into baby stepping, it's going to start at that negative 1.28. I printed out a bed wire cover that we can attach to cover over the soldered leads. I'm going to use an M3 by 10 millimeter screw. I'm also going to do some cable management for the bed wires. I'm going to use this 3 millimeter nylon, and then I'm going to wrap the wires and the nylon up with some spiral wrap. Now we'll slice my favorite bed leveling profile, export the G-code, and now we can hit print. And if you need to adjust your Z height, you can just use the baby stepping. 1280 was looking a little smashed, so I brought mine back to about 0.980. Our bed leveling print is done, and it looks to be a little bit to the right. The center of the bed is at 125. The center of this print is at 142. Now the test print on the bed was actually just a little bit to the right of center. And that's because on this machine, the X isn't actually a 250. The part that I used for the X carriage made room for an end stop that had a PCB on it. So it's actually a little smaller. I might go back and reprint that part to use a micro switch so we can get the full bed size. For now, we can just fix it in slicer with a negative 17 for offset on bed size. It would be a lot more accurate to set this up in Marlin, but for now, until I can get the part altered, we can just set it to negative 17 right here before we slice the models. And there it is. The upgrade's complete and things are looking good. Now you might want to pay attention to the thermistor that you set in Marlin. I went with option one and everything seems to be working just fine, but you might have to change it depending on the bed that you use. Also, you'll probably want to tune the PID settings of the bed to make sure all the temperature settings are just right. Now this upgrade's probably going to make the prints look a lot better, but it's also going to help us test the more advanced features of Marlin because the probing of the bed will be a lot more accurate. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.